amigos, una nueva edición de Auto 060 y hoy vamos a tener un show muy especial, vamos a dedicar la hora entera a un solo evento de los muchos a los que asistimos durante todo el año, pero este es un evento muy especial, se trata del evento Nissan 360, este es una, la reunión que hace el fabricante japonés de todos los vehículos que fabrica alrededor del mundo en todas sus plantas, en Japón, en Tailandia, en México, en Europa y hace una presentación de todos los nuevos modelos, las nuevas tecnologías eh, y una, una reunión muy interesante también con colegas de otros países. Así que eh, vamos a escuchar primero a Víctor Nassif, que es uno de los directores de comunicación global de Nissan. Él es un mexicano basado en Londres y tiene mucha información al respecto. Después en los siguientes segmentos vamos a hablar con diseñadores, con ingenieros. Vamos a hablar también con una de las pilotos eh, de pruebas de, de la Nissan y con un colega inglés que vive en Japón y ve la industria automotriz desde la perspectiva desde este país. Así que vamos aquí con la primera entrevista de Nissan 360 con Victor Nassi. Hello Victor, um, so here at the Nissan 360 in California, this is I believe the third uh, edition of this uh, event, right? It is. Uh, we've done it uh, uh, since about uh, 10 years ago was the first one and then in 2008 was the second one and now we're having this one yeah. in 2013 in uh, Southern California. Yeah, the past one was in uh, Portugal, I remember in Estoril. It was uh, exactly. a fantastic event. But I, I have to be honest with you, I'm even more surprised by this one. I mean, it's just the logistics of this event are incredible. Yeah, we have uh, over 130 cars. Obviously, there's a couple racing cars there. We brought some uh, heritage cars from our collection in Japan, uh, cars that were shipped over that uh, maybe most of the public and the press have not seen in uh, in many, many years. So, yes, we've got quite a few. Okay, so let's talk about Nissan. I mean, why does Nissan do this event? I mean, this is pretty amazing and very unusual. I don't think there's some other manufacturer that does this. Yeah, we do that for a couple of reasons. One, I think, is internal, to show what we're doing internally on a global scale. Uh, so often, um, some of our team members are involved in regional uh, work, and they're doing a great job there, but this allows a lot of big executives to see the global scope that we have in products that maybe they don't have a chance to drive because it's not part of their region. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that it's great also for the executives and the press to meet. It's more casual, it's more relaxed, it's not a motor show that you go from one brand to another, yeah. one company to another. You're actually able to, to really talk directly to the executives and to understand the philosophy behind Nissan. Yeah. And, um, The, the range of vehicles is amazing. I mean, the three brands, uh, mm -hmm. Nissan, obviously, Infiniti, and now Datsun that is coming back, right? Yes. In some markets, not everywhere. Yeah, we have uh, Datsun, which is uh, one of my personal favorites. When I grew up in Mexico, uh, we had uh, the Datsun 510, obviously. And uh, the brand is being reintroduced mostly in Thailand and uh, uh, Asian countries, and obviously it'll start in, uh, in Russia in the not-too-distant future. Uh, we have Infiniti which is uh, growing very quickly. Uh, we have new products that are being introduced for Infinity, and then we have Nissan, which is uh, very, very well known in, in throughout the world. Yeah. And uh, with the Nissan, I think you kind of, kind of separate uh, things for passenger cars and commercial vehicles. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, the taxi division is growing pretty quick, so maybe that will be a third one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was uh, very fortunate enough to work on a couple of the taxi projects. One, when I was uh, starting here in the United States, Uh, they had actually contacted the design, the New York City uh, contacted design first. And uh, so I feel like I was part of that initial group that, that was getting visibility for the taxi. Uh, and then obviously taxis that are being done in uh, other countries. Yeah, so the, that's starting the, the to London expand. Cup is uh, coming up too, right? Yeah, yeah. When I was, because uh, uh, I'm based in London, uh, we were working on the taxi. And obviously you're going to see some good news coming out of that in the not too distant future. Yeah. So, and then the commercial vehicles. I just drove uh, a version, a concept car, I think it's called the NV200 Atlas, uh, which mm -hmm. is like a derivative of the Leaf, so an electric commercial vehicle. Yes. Absolutely. That's, uh, we see that as a, as a huge potential uh, for people that are driving in the city. Uh, they do their deliveries. They're doing not so much in terms of long mileage, but uh, they're spending a lot of time doing their deliveries. We want it to be as uh, efficient and as effective as possible. Uh, the other vehicle that I think you should drive is that 30-seater bus that we have out there. Okay. Which not too many people know that we make a bus 
in obviously mostly the Asian countries, but it's fantastic. To yeah, drive. I already drove that uh, the <laughs> Japanese cab with the, with the level up for the door. It's amazing. It's pretty cool. It is. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, things uh, that are happening in, in, happening in Nissan now. Nissan 88, what is that? Yeah, the Power 88 uh, talks about, the, the word power is really the brand power. And uh, the 88, eight, the first eight stands for obviously the, the, the market share that we're growing and the profits. The second eight is the profits. So, so we're that's hoping eight percent of market share globally. Globally and eight percent profits globally. Uh, we're not quite at eight percent in the in the market share yet, but we're we're heading towards that. Obviously, our objective is to do it by 2016. Yeah. And uh, within that, to achieve those goals, I mean, uh, a lot of product has to come down the pipe, right? And uh, the, the yeah. base is incredible. I hear like every, a new car every six weeks or something yeah, like that? Yes. Uh, obviously, it's not going to come all of it in one region. It's going to be in different regions. Yeah, but still. But we have six, pro uh, yeah, we have uh, 51 new products coming out over the next uh, three years, four years, all together during this Power 88 initiative. The other thing that happens is the technology. We're going to have 15 new technologies coming out every year between now and then, uh, which, again, it's a combination of new products, new technologies, expanding our market footprint. Those are all the things that are going to help us to achieve Power 88. Yeah. And uh, speaking of technology, there are a few things that um, during the presentations here at Nissan 360 I've been hearing about. Uh, safety and emissions, and the number is, the common number is zero. I mean, <laughs> safety, um, zero that's by pretty soon, I mean, within yeah. the technology that you guys have? Yeah, that's what we're aiming for, obviously. We want everybody that uh, drives a uh, Nissan Motor Company vehicle, which is Nissan, Infiniti, or Datsun, to uh, be safe, to be safe and to feel safe. And so we want zero fatalities. Uh, we also have uh, a huge initi initiative, as you can imagine, for uh, electric vehicles that's uh, zero um, CO2 emissions, which is uh, fantastic, and we're being very socially, socially responsible. And that's uh, being led by the LEAF, obviously, and other yeah. uh, projects, but also yeah. the, in the producti production part of it, like your plants are, are yeah. becoming more efficient, like the disposal of materials and all those kind of things. Absolutely. Right? So it's not just turning out the car that's efficient, it's also the whole process from the very beginning. How do we become more efficient? How do we uh, show our social responsibilities from even the initial planning stages through the manufacturing, through the sales experience? Yeah. And um, the other thing, is, uh, we talk about a lot about the, the LEAF, which is like kind of the, the star of the company right now. Mm -hmm. But you have another star on the other extreme, the GTR. <laughs> GTR. <laughs> yeah. That's an amazing. Everybody's like online to drive that one. Yeah. Well, uh, I always say that whenever I talk GTR, I always start off with saying it's my baby GTR. Because uh, I, I love that car. Uh, not because I designed it uh, or uh, worked in the development of the vehicle, but because I feel so closely associated with that car. Um, when it first came out, I just said, that's it. I have to buy one. And I'm very fortunate. So you have one? I bought one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I talk about the car, I'm talking at it. Not you, only know, from, you know what you're talking about. Then, exactly. Basically. I'm talking about it from a customer standpoint, too. Yeah. Just how happy I am with that car. And that car is amazing because uh, the technology, the power, the handling, and all that. Actually, I've heard that Juan Pablo Montoya, the former uh, Formula One driver and a NASCAR driver now, got one for his birthday a few years ago from his wife, Connie, <laughs> and he has said that that's the best car he has ever driven. So, I mean, that, that speaks a lot. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, obviously, a guy like Juan Pablo Montoya is able to take the car to its limit. Uh, I'm not. But I can tell you, as, as, a, as a normal driver, uh, I appreciate its performance, and it's just so awesome. Uh, the other day, I was driving, actually, one. It, w it wasn't my own, but it was one of the company cars here. I was driving it around Los Angeles. And uh, uh, a young lady stopped us on the street, and she said, I just love that car. So even the people that haven't driven the car automatically acknowledge how, how good that car is. Yeah. And um, not only how good it is, but it's, I mean, it's a super sports car. So it is. I was gonna, it's affordable for what you get. I mean, it's like around $100,000, a yeah. little more maybe. Yeah. But you get a lot of car for that money. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Uh, there's nothing on the road that can beat it. Yeah, for that price. Because yeah. if you go to that kind of performance and power and all that, you're going to spend a lot more money, right? Yeah, absolutely. About five times more. Okay. Um, one more thing about Nissan. Uh, it's a huge company. Most people don't, don't really realize how big it is. How many employees, how many plants? 
Uh, can you give us a quick overall of the, of the company? Well, in actuality, I can't even tell you how many employees we have. I know we have quite a few. Uh, obviously, it's split up regionally, and the plants that we have were everywhere in the world. Uh, so what we try to do is the products that are sold in specific regions are built in those regions. So the cars that are built in the Americas region, most of the percentage is really coming from uh, the cars that, that uh, are sold and built uh, right there in Mexico, in the um, United States, and now obviously in Brazil. Yeah. Speaking of Mexico, this is a fully bilingual show. I know you are from Mexico. You mentioned it before. Uh, so, cambio español un poco acá para la audiencia que no domina completamente el inglés. México es un país muy importante para la Nissan. Eh, ahí tienen dos o tres plantas, ¿no? Cuernavaca, Aguascaliente, me parece, y están ampliando, ¿no? Sí, sí absolutamente. Este, pues uh, sabemos que, que México y Nissan son parte de la misma familia, si puedo decir. Este, somos muy, este, somos la, la compañía número uno en México. Y, este, y yo me acuerdo desde un niño que, que tenía un, un tío que tenía una agencia de Nissan, no. de Nissan y eso pues siempre me ha este, Ahí sembró la semilla me ha para, mucho. para llegar a Nissan. ¿Y cómo llegaste sí. tú a Nissan, por cierto? Pues yo este, he estado aquí en la compañía desde hace 10 años. Um, cuando llegué vine a California, que vine como vicepresidente de Nissan Design America. Y, este, y ahora estoy trabajando en Europa, estoy, he estado trabajando en Londres los últimos tres años y medio. Eh, primero como vicepresidente de Nissan Design Europe y ahora soy este, eh, eh, Global Head Product Communications. Entonces, este, toda la comunicación de los productos que, que estamos haciendo en todas las partes del mundo, este, parte de mi equipo está, tiene la responsabilidad de, de comunicar eso. Una compañía muy diversa porque recientemente hablé con uh, tu colega eh, Alfonso Albaiza, un cubano sí. de Miami, que ahora es director global de Infinity de diseño. Sí. Así que felicidades. Eh, Víctor, eh, muchas gracias por traernos aquí a Nissan 360 primero por toda esta información de Nissan y me imagino la audiencia puede buscar Nissan.com uh, dependiendo de donde esté en cada país ¿no? pero en Estados Unidos NissanUSA.com tengo entendido ¿no? Exactamente sí. Bueno, Víctor Nassif eh, muchas gracias por otra vez por la oportunidad y estamos hablando pronto vamos a seguir manejando autos por acá Ok, muy Tenemos bien Tenemos 130 gracias. así que <risa> mucho Gracias Ok, gracias ya regresamos aquí en Auto 060 con más de Nissan 360 desde California. 